My grandfather always used to say things like, if I was an apple, I'd be eaten every day. What do you think he meant by that? That he had a secret family he didn't tell us about? We've all found ourselves hungry for something delicious but low on cash, so today I'm gonna help a mythical beast make something delicious on the cheap. Today's struggle request comes from Philip in New Jersey. He's not requesting a struggle. He's, he's not, he's, no, he's requesting like a struggle meal. Like he wants help with struggle Phillip meal. From Philip in New Jersey. Yeah, Philip in New Jersey is a person, but you gotta say that like the, the nouns matter. Today is Philip. Philip from New Jersey. What's up, guys? I'm Philip, and I'm from Absegan, New Jersey. And I just found two dollars and eighty cents worth of change under my uh, Ric Flair Funko Pop doll here, and uh, woo! And I was actually wondering, what can I make, Mythical Chef Josh? Philip, two dollars and eighty cents—that is no problem at all. But you got a little bit wrong. Stop it. Woo! Wah! Woo! Stop it! Woo! It's time for a segment we're calling <laughs> Nickel, Nickel and Dime. <laughs> I mean, 280, Josh, that's like, that's not a lot of money. What, what, you know? <laughs> You're hit me, so dude. stupid and ignorant. So, what we're gonna do, we're making Slim Jim risotto. So, I have this bag of rice for 89 cents. Mm. I have this can of chicken broth, normally 59 cents, on sale for 50 cents. Oh, I have these four 50. snack size Slim Jims, four for a dollar from a local gas station. I have these free Parmesan cheese packets. I accumulate them zero when I order money. from Big Mamas and Big Papas. Zero That's zero money. money. I steal some butters from the NoHo Diner. No, you reallocate, you don't steal. And then I have a shallot for 36 cents is gonna offer a huge flavor punch. Lucas, you ready to snap into a risotto? You bet I am! Oh yeah! Lucas, I need you to take all these Parmesan cheese packets. This is what people what, about 12, 13 Parmesan cheese. What Have you ever seen you, that much Parmesan what, cheese packets? What, what did so you, you just do, say? Whenever you order pizza, you ask them for a couple extra Parmesan cheese packets, a couple extra crushed red peppers, and then you have a drawer. You have a drawer where you're gonna open it and you're gonna put all your Parmesan cheese in, and that's called aging. Don't eat the Parmesan. Wait, give me some. It's not good Parm. Mm. No, not pure. Uh, ah. Let's not use this. You got no. a more expensive Parm round? No, but then it's not too bad. Then, then we're screwing over Philip. What's up, Philip? I'm gonna cut open these Slim Jims. I'm just gonna take it. Well, no, you didn't tell me. Where am I putting these? Uh, put them in a bowl. One of the many bowls you have. Shipper just do, but do one bowl of Parmesan, then I'm gonna put mint Slim Jims in the other. So what risotto is, it's, it's rice. It's typically short grain, reason long grain, because that's what you find for cheaper. But it's rice that has been cooked and constantly stirred in an incremental amount of broth. But you need aromatics to really drive in flavor. So typically, some people might use, you know, a little bit of prosciutto, sometimes even, you know, some, uh, some guanciale oh, to kind of sweat in the pan. Love oh, the chale. chale. But that's too love expensive. It. So what we're doing is we're taking a heavily spiced meat in the American canon. This is the American version of like nduya or porchetta di testa. Mm, this is like I a beautiful American salumi, the Slim Jim. It's got so many aromatics in it. When it's fancy, I like to call it Slimothy Jimothy by its full name. Did you say salumi? Do you salumi. mean salami? No, salumi is the greater <laughs> overarching. T so you might think that shallots are something that's expensive, but there's more flavor concentrated into a shallot than something like an onion. So this is only 36 cents. So you're gonna get a ton of flavor with it. So I'm gonna mince yeah. half of that, save the other half for garnish. So I think the last time I was here, I said something about the uh, shallots being like the onion, that if you know what's Wee. going on, you get those shallots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I still stand by that. You, the inflection in your voice sounded like you had more to say. Don't. Oh, you don't, no, you're done. done. That was yeah, the I'm end, done. shallots are good. Was the Still kind of, good. Right. You were worried that someone forgot that you thought the shallots were good. There were a good. lot of you comments thought. about my opinions on shallots. Yeah, yeah, there were a lot of, there were a lot of comments about you. There were a lot of comments about yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, trying to chop this as finally as possible. I almost wanted to like really kind of dissolve in there. I don't want any Slim Jim chunks, right, Lucas? There's gonna be a little bit of Slim Jim skin in there, that Slimothy Jimothy Skinothy, if we're really talking. You Morals. love the Slimothy Jimothy thing. <laughs> Did you like wake up last <laughs> night like, ah, Slimothy, Slimothy Jimothy? Jimothy. <laughs> yeah. I also thought up a joke last night. <laughs> oh, hit me. Yeah. Yeah, no, what's it? So when I was a kid, a Slim Jim was not made of meat. It was a thin piece of metal with a little hook on the end that you'd, you know, use to jack cars open. <laughs> Done with the butter. <laughs> what, uh, what was the joke? It's funny that they named the meat stick after something that you commit felonies with. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess. Felonies are funny. What do you think about them sometimes? They're not, that wasn't the joke. But what do we do now? I got all the butter out. You okay? You I'm cool. You okay? I thought up another joke. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear, I'd love to hear it. It was about bats, but I couldn't really remember the punchline. Is that an appropriate joke for this time? Bats? Yeah. Why aren't bats appropriate? Uh, well, let's hear the joke first and I can tell you. Why do bats sleep upside down? I, I, don't, I don't know. They like it. That's uh, an appropriate bad joke for this yeah. time. So Want to hear an inappropriate bad shallot, joke? And I'm just gonna cut little notches. No, I'm in. not this gonna go for it. A little technique called a brunoise. Do you have any dinosaur facts? <sighs> yeah. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, I got I got a couple times. So yeah, I, honestly, I'm, you know, you didn't really seem so hot on them last time. No, it's uh, not. It's not that it wasn't. No, hot no, it's just that you think that I you think that I couldn't see when I was off camera, and you you looked straight into the camera, and you said I don't even know why he's talking about dinosaurs. Yeah, what's the most interesting dinosaur fact you know, buddy? A Triceratops has three tops. <laughs> That's right. I okay. don't care. Well, a dinosaur fact, like you really want a dinosaur fact? Yeah, they're big. Like they're big. Let's not waste air time here. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, hey, so I got the, sh the shallot mince. That's gonna be a nice little aromatic to add to the start of the risotto. You'll see later. What's an aromatic mean? So an aromatic is something you would add to the base of a dish that's really gonna give it a nice perfumey aroma throughout it. So that can be like onion, celery, garlic, shallots. Squirrel. Did you Smell. know? It smells weird. Squirrels and dinosaurs have a common ancestor? It's kind of not really your place to Carl. with dinosaur facts. Like the Ice Age squirrel? Yeah. Uh, don't care for that squirrel. My favorite part of that. Uh, so I'm gonna take this other part of the sloth. shallot. I'm just gonna slice it very thin. So and these the are just gonna go on top for garnish. I wanna fry them in some brown butter. Cause we got all this free butter right here. And so I think that you know we can really put that to use when you get that butter nice and smoky. Typically you might fry shallots in like a vegetable oil or something. It's gonna get nice and brown and caramelized. But these I'm just gonna keep you know really kind of fresh and pure in butter. And so hey Lucas, they were really strong. Ready to start this risotto? And the teeth were huge. The biggest teeth. We're gonna start our risotto. So we have. Equal parts stock and water. Most people would do this with straight stock. Also, common misconception that you're supposed to put cream in risotto. It's actually the starch that's gonna create the creaminess of the rice dish. So we have our stock and water mixture heating there. We're gonna get a lot of flavor from the Slim Jim. It's kinda gonna create its own stock. So I'm just gonna get a little Lucas still down there. He's, yeah, he's not. He's coming up and he's curious. He's a curious boy. So we have this nice wide saute pan. So hey, do you wanna wash this rice? Nope. Uh, I'm gonna just trust that you're gonna wash it. You rice. gotta stop asking me. Questions. Even if you don't wash hey, the give rice. Give me demands. I'm a guy I need Lucas, demands. wash the rice! Yes, daddy. <laughs> well, I have the shallots in a little bowl. Oh, no. I just added them to the hot butter. We're gonna get those sweating in there. We don't want them to brown. And now I'm also gonna take all the Slim Jim grind. Nice powdered Slim Jim in there. Slim Jims, I mean, what do they got? They got all this like pepper, they got paprika, they got garlic, they got a lot of beef fat. This you is know, not washing my nice hands meats. like at all. You're not, I don't know no, why no, the, I'm doing your this. Your hands wash the rice. The rice does not wash your hands. So we have the shallots. You see they've soaked up all that fat. You can actually see the shallots and the butter changing color from all that Slim Jim. And so now you're actually going to add the rice to the mixture of fat and aromatics. Uh, Put that in there, please. All right, so now we have the rice in there. We're just Social gonna give it in, like, a couple little three. flips and you can actually see the rice is changing color. Like you may add saffron if you had more than 280 to work with. It's another you're aromatic, like, oh, I'm guys. A rich person. You wouldn't really so smell it. Smell what we're it. doing smell, now is we're smelling, good. smelling the rice good. and what, oh, you guys can't smell this, but that smells like butts. It really is gonna lose that it butt like aroma. It smells really nice. Kind There's of a like lot of really lovely meaty, spicy meaty in that Slim Jam that you smell in the shallots. For some reason we're buttering up some water. I can't stop thinking about mushrooms. Yeah. You know some people are really scared of eating them? Whoa! What? Everybody rewind, we just pushed up our glasses at the well, same yeah, they time. <laughs> just ladle in about a quarter of this stock, and while you're ladling it, you're gonna take your spoon, and you're gonna Little. swirl around. This is like we're getting married, and we're, we're taking the There it is, you the wanna cake. see that bubble, but you want the heat at about medium, because you don't want to Really nice, dude. Thanks, man, I got Definition. high blood pressure. So you don't want your stock to ever come to a boil, because then you're losing moisture on that liquid. So we're just gonna give it another. That's my nice, job, but okay. Yeah, just act like you little, just a little bit. Oh, little bit so good. much. Yeah, there it is. Okay. You might be wondering, whoa, we got all this Parmesan cheese. What are we gonna do with it? Wait, wait, I'm let, gonna, me, let me do that. Go ahead. Whoa, we, we got, got, got all this awesome. Parmesan cheese. What are we gonna do with wow, it? Wow, Lucas, what a great question about cookery. So what's gonna happen is when the rice is almost fully cooked, there's still a substantial amount of liquid left. We're gonna add the Parmesan cheese to that, and it's gonna kind of thicken up the sauce, and then Duh. we're gonna use a little bit to dump Duh. on top. Ask Duh. me what we're gonna do with the rice water. What do we do with the rice water? Chug it. I thought about doing that as a gag. I'm not gonna do it. No, you shouldn't do that. I heard somebody died doing that. Chugging rice water? No, drowning. Drowning. I have another joke. Oh yeah, go ahead. So so I, I thought this up when I was in college. Uh huh. And I found it really, really, really funny. I think I'll find it as funny as you do. Well, how do you drown a giraffe? I don't know. Lucas. You just tilt its neck back and pour a cup of water down its throat. Oh, I get it. Okay, okay. I was really funny in college, you... and I kind of lost it a little bit. Well, I mean, now you have a, a space to practice. What is that? This? No, right here. This is like a kind of like I think do this, of this like as twice your stage a year. And your... it's not, you know. Yeah, but I'm glad you brought all your best material. My grandfather always used to say things like, "If I was an apple, I'd be eaten every day." What do you think he meant by that? That he had a secret family he didn't tell us about. That you think he was trying to? Because I know that's true. We talked about that yeah. recently, and you're fine with that being. Last time I was on this show, I actually called out my parents in a way I didn't have the guts to in 26 years. Vicky and Kevin. What the hell? 
what the hell? What the hell, Mom? Anyway. Okay, so this show is kind of like therapy for, for us, except If for, apples were peaches, everybody would get a tree in their backyard. If candies and nuts were trees and butts, then we'd all have a Merry Christmas. See, I love jokes like that. That's, those are my favorite kinds of jokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I was a thing of risotto, I wouldn't have Slim Jim in me, because that looks yeah, yeah. disgusting. If broth was cheese, then who knows which way's up. If broth was cheese and all pasta would be soggy. Yeah. See, the thing about risotto is it's really, it's a dish of love. I've always had a problem with that. With all the Food Network's people being like, well, and then, and then the last ingredient is attention and love. Yeah, no, no. I don't get it, I don't like it, it doesn't mean anything to me, I don't have surplus love to put into my risotto. For me, love in cooking is kind of the unexplainable, the intangible, the step that someone tells you to take, like, hey, make sure you use the back of your hand to knead out this dough instead of the palm. It's you trusting that that technique that can't be explained in any like scientific way Really, trusting that that technique works. And no, that, it can be explained scientifically. I mean, you, you I, if you really got down to like nuts and bolts, everything, yeah. like molecules, you know. But uh, like, once you become that, don't, that, don't that discount like, when people are like, uh, "Did you know that technically we're never?" It's not the religion of cooking. You put There's your a hand science together, of cooking. So the Parmesan cheese, both it's gonna act as a thickener, especially because you know the stuff from the packet, it's not like pure Parmesan, it actually is cut with cellulose. Yeah, AKA it doesn't look like pulp. real cheese. No, and so we're just gonna add that in there. We're gonna save some for garnish. Hey Lucas, what's that cheese gonna do? Well, the whole thing about the cheese, Josh, is it's really gonna thicken everything up and it's gonna give that particular snap that you always kind of talk about and you really want. But what I like to really see the cheese do is sort of it adds a kind of a character and an intelligence to the risotto. Whereas before you weren't elevating anything, now you're really elevating as much as you possibly can. And if I've learned anything from Chef Gordon Ramsay, it's that you gotta elevate, 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 elevate. Okay, we're done. So we're just gonna make a little quick kind of garnish to top of this. We got some of these shallots left, we sliced them. We're waiting for this butter to brown. But until then, so we're just gonna pour this risotto into a bowl. That's nice, you see some nice liquid pulling around the edges. That is exactly what we want. So now uh, this butter is foaming a little bit. So we're just gonna take the shallots, we're just gonna drop it in the butter and then we're gonna let the butter cool. get super high heat. But you don't want to caramelize. You don't want to caramelize. No, so you don't want caramelization is a process that happens over a long period of time, much like the way that I left raptors. my home. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, the wow, running away from us. Check this out. So yeah, as you see the butter starting to brown a little bit, it's getting nice and frothy. Yeah, that's that's what a lovely so topping is gonna be for our risotto. Those are almost caramelized, These Josh. Are, they're I don't not caramelized, tell you business, they're dude. brown, get they're nice and toasty, and so what I'm gonna do just get some of those brown jellies. Parmesan is a long process. You know, burnt butter me up. Dog. Yeah, sprinkle, sprinkle, Parmesan cheese. We got a little extra for snacking later. No much, I love it. But there's only one thing left to do. Ric Flair, me. We got to eat it. Oh, cur. Lucas, this looks gorgeous. I think you did a great job helping Thanks. me. I think I did a great job cooking it. Philip, I think you did a great job Philip. finding $2.80 under your Ric Flair Funko Pop doll. It's really, Woo! you did the best job, Philip. Picking up that Ric Flair Funko doll was really, it was great. I think you have other talents too. Lucas, let's dig into this. Okay. Wow, this is a really nice towel, Josh. This is I... the Mythical Kitchen bib. Oh, I love it. All right, let's dig in. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of that caramelized. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a little bit of the, oh, you're saying that. I'm gonna get a little bit of that caramelized shallot on top. You take See, care of the caramelized nice. shallot, I'll take you care know, of it. Yeah, the result's been sitting. Uh, the thing they don't tell you on cooking shows, food all sits for like an hour before you eat it. Like chop, they're eating all that stuff cold. Who knows, that's why the ice cream is a little melted. Like, well, the ice cream's a little melted. Yeah, you let it sit there for an hour. This is very good. This is very good. The mouthfeel. Fantastic. Tell me about. Tell me more about the mouthfeel. My mouth feel good. <laughs> My mouth feel good too. Mm -hmm. What's funny? We used half stock, half water. We even used a little bit more water. So typically you wouldn't get that much flavor out of it. But the Slim Jim that we ground up, the Slim Jim is great. Actually creates almost a stock in itself because it's such a highly spiced meat that it really works when worked into the risotto. You know, I was going to say that too, Josh. But what I'm really focusing on is the um, the amount of butter present. Because mm -hmm. I love the butter. The one thing about this that I really wish you hadn't done is sprinkle about the worst Parmesan cheese that we <laughs> could find on top of it. Underneath that Parmesan cheese is layer upon layer of goodness, Josh. Luke, as well, this risotto is really delicious. It's killer. It's only $1.40 per serving. These are big old dinner servings. Obviously, it's worth it, but do you see yourself actually incorporating this in your daily life? No, I don't, honestly. I mean, it's, it's a, <laughs> kind of a broken, like, wet rice. <laughs> I don't know really what you want me to say. <laughs> I thought you were like, yeah, Josh, thank you for equipping me with the tools to make a nice, easy weeknight dinner for not a lot of money, but no. Oh, just... no, 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 in that, in that respect, like, I do appreciate it, because me, I'm a, you know, I'm a penny pincher, I like to spend my money on certain yeah, yeah. things that aren't exactly edible, and which could, <laughs> could really be like anything but food, I'm not insinuating a specific thing at all. I would eat this again, I would eat this again this mm -hmm. week, I wouldn't eat this again next week, but the following week I would. It's sort of an every other week really, like, scenario for me. Numbers. What, what kind of, is confusing me is I don't know what a Slim Jim tastes like. I forgot you never had a Slim Jim. Well, no, I, I just have, have one right here. Put oh, it in okay. your mouth. You put it in my mouth. All right. 
Airplane's coming in the hangar. Choo choo! Oh, the airplane's made. <laughs> nope. Not for you, huh? I like that a lot less than I like that. Um, but I'm more interested in exactly how much the ingredients came out to. Literally all the ingredients for two large dinner portions, $2.75. But hold on, Josh. He had 280. So what are we gonna do with this fantastic little nickel? Um, use it in like a poorly crafted story about if someone had a nickel for every time a very specific situation happened to them. If I had a nickel for every time somebody tried to get me to tell a joke off the cuff like that, I'd put this nickel in my pocket. Thank you so much to Philip for submitting that video and thank you for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new recipes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, out every Wednesday wherever you get your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food. We'll see you next time. Eat. Woo! You can cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen apron. Available now at mythical.com.